I am so excited about this project. A few weeks ago, my friends Ethan and Vincent at Because We Make, great podcast by the way, you should check it out, they put out their holiday project challenge, which is to make an original toy or game. Within minutes, I knew that this was the perfect opportunity to do something that's been in the back of my head ever since I got my 3D printer. Design a fully functioning puzzle box made entirely out of 3D printed parts. I've always had a thing for Art Deco design, whether it be Frank Lloyd Wright, 1920s New York City architecture, Bioshock, The Great Gatsby, or Snowpiercer. And to my eye, all of the overlapping patterns and line work that you see in Art Deco look like perfect places to hide the seams and mechanisms of a puzzle box. It's a match made in heaven. I spent a while sketching at ideas, looking at lots of pictures of Art Deco buildings, elevators, interiors, and furniture, and eventually settled on this temple style beam and column box with a four step lock operated by a piece on each side. We'll get more into how the mechanism works later on in the video. Once I was happy with the concept, I hopped into Fusion 360 for the detailed design. I split the puzzle box into lots of different pieces, 26 to be exact, which might seem a little gratuitous for a 3D printed project, but I wanted to optimize the orientation of each piece to get the best surface finish, minimize the amount of support material, and most importantly, minimize the amount of sanding. If you're interested in printing your own puzzle box, the STL files, Fusion 360 model, and full print and assembly instructions are available as a package on my online store. Check out the link in the description for more details. I printed all of the pieces with Hatchbox Wood PLA on my Prusa i3 Mark IIIs. Wood PLA is this really interesting material made from wood particles suspended in plastic. It allows you to print objects that have a more natural feel than traditional PLA, the end product is a little closer to MDF than actual wood, and it's perfect for a little ornamental box like this. But you could really print this puzzle box from any filament type, as long as it's sufficiently strong and stiff. And since most of the pieces are relatively flat, you could probably adapt this design for a laser cutter, or supersize it and make it on a CNC. You might just need to break up some of the more complex shapes into flat pieces. All right, after a few days spent printing, I have all 26 pieces of the puzzle box printed and cleaned up. I did a bunch of test fits and it looks like it should work, but there's only one way to know for sure. And I'm a little nervous because it involves epoxy and super glue. Let's put this thing together. <laughs> All right, so I got the outer walls all assembled on the base, as well as these four outer columns. I put all that together with this gel superglue, and this stuff is really great because it gives you a bit of working time, more than traditional superglue, but you still only have to apply pressure for about 30 seconds or so to get a really strong permanent fit. 
And unlike traditional super glue, this stuff doesn't just flow everywhere the second you dispense it. It actually holds its shape a bit because, well, it's a gel. The next thing I'm going to do is assemble these inner locking pieces and attach them to these outer medallions, as I like to call them. These are the little suns and the buildings. I want to get these pieces really precisely positioned since they'll be right front and center on the outside of the box. So we're going to attach those with five minute epoxy just to get a bit more working time. Oh, and one other thing. If you plan on downloading the files and making this puzzle box yourself, make sure you check the fit of all the interlocking pieces at this point. I noticed that this disc lock was a pretty tight fit and I actually had to sand down the edges of it just a little bit so that it wouldn't stick in the side slots. I also gave a light sanding of these inner side slots before I assembled the box itself and I did a dry fit with everything. So just something to be aware of if you're making it yourself. All right, let's put this thing together. So I got the two suns and the two buildings all attached. Everything seems to be working well. And while I still have this inner mechanism exposed, I've gone ahead and set up two cameras so I can show you how moving these four outer pieces actually unlocks the box. So here we go. The first thing you do is you take this set of buildings, move it up and tilt it slightly to the left. What that does is it frees this first sun to move just slightly to the left. That movement then frees the second set of buildings to move again up and to the left. You can see it slides right into that little crevice. And then finally, this piece actually allows you to take off the lid. With this corner free, it can rotate 90 degrees. And then you can see that this disc is now flush to this top edge. And that allows the lid to slide slightly forwards in these notches and then be lifted straight up. All right, so with that done, let's go ahead and put those inner walls in and finish this box up. I spoke too soon. The pieces that form the inner wall, which covers up the mechanism, are a super tight fit, and they actually press slightly against each section of the lock, making them really difficult to operate. So I think I'm actually just gonna leave them out. It's kind of cool having the inner mechanism exposed and the inner pieces of the lock are really robust. They're basically just flat plates, so they don't really need any protection. I think what happened is I didn't leave quite enough tolerance between this inner wall and the mechanism, as well as between the inner wall and the little rails they slide into. And what exacerbated it is when I was printing these pieces, I was struggling with some bed adhesion issues. So with each of these pieces, the edges lifted slightly off the print bed, so they're not perfectly flat, and I think that's why they're pressing up against the lock pieces. If you're printing the puzzle box yourself, I will be including the Fusion 360 file along with the STLs, so you can play with the tolerance and maybe achieve a much nicer fit than I did, and you'll be able to include the inner walls. All right, so I guess we can go ahead and attach the lid. Now give me the beat. It took a bit of trimming to get the slot in that front rail perfectly aligned with the disc lock, but now the lid can drop into the top of the box, slide forward, and by rotating the sun 90 degrees, the lid is locked into place. And the puzzle box works! I am so excited. But there is one final detail I wanna add before I can call this project done. From the very beginning of this project, the top of the lid always felt a little empty, and it took me a while to figure out the right way to fill this space. Eventually, I realized that this would be a great opportunity to really play up the Art Deco aesthetic and add some texture and color to the puzzle box. So I took a piece of veg tan leather, stamped it with a basket weave pattern, dyed it black, and then used contact cement to inlay it into the top of the lid. And I love the way this looks. 
The black pattern leather adds so much texture and visual interest to the puzzle box and makes it feel way nicer than if it were just wood PLA. It also makes it really inviting to use as a catch-all. I keep wanting to leave my phone and watch on top. And actually, that gives me kind of an interesting idea. If I put a wireless charging adapter inside the box, I could turn this into a really cool wireless charging station. Maybe a project for another day. Because now I want to have some fun. My girlfriend, Eden, does not know how to open the puzzle box. So I want to give it to her and see how long it takes her to figure out how to open it. Let's go find out. Here you are. <gasps> you did a thing. <gasps> twist. It's okay. They know. They know how it works. Wait, you already told them? Too, I had them earlier. Oh, yeah! That was so interesting. I did it! <laughs> Do you want to see how it works? So basically, up to the side. This one moves slightly to the side. This one moves up and to the side. And then this one twists 90 degrees. Wow. What do you think? You know what? Because you don't have any opposable thumbs, I'll share my sour cue with you. <laughs> I don't know if she'll Oh, I think she'll lie. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. I did way better than I thought I would. Me too. That was like, that was pretty good. I'm happy that you didn't get it like instantaneously. Yeah. <laughs> There's at least a little bit of pondering. Wow. Can I eat dinner now? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Here's what's our here. And thank you for watching. This project took many hours of designing, printing, writing the assembly instructions, filming and editing, and I am so happy to finally share it with you. If you make your own puzzle box, I would love to see pictures. You can tag me on Instagram at MorleyKurt, and I'm especially curious to see any modifications. If you print it from another material, try out a different style lid inlay, put on a sweet custom paint job, or even make it on a CNC or laser cutter. All right, I just checked, and the hashtag Art Deco Puzzle Box is currently unclaimed. So use that as well if you make a puzzle box, and let's blow up that hashtag. Oh, and for Ethan and Vincent, my two words are decorous and scintillating. I'll put a little explanation in the description in case those aren't self-explanatory. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Now give me the beat.